All right. Ugh, weak sticks. <clears throat> All right. Well, hey, everybody. It's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again here on Topper Tuesday. What I have to talk to you about today is an RDA. Now, this is a freaking powerful little beastly little atomizer right here. This is the... 454 big block atomizer version 2 comes from the company formerly known as kryptonite vapor currently known as kryptonite vapor although they are changing their name not to worry i will have links in the description to both the kryptonite vapor website and the local vape website that i got this from so yeah 454 blig block blig block blig block blig block big block version Two. That was, wow, that was way more difficult to say than it needed to be. In order to get to know this atomizer just a little bit better, what we're going to do is go up close and personal, as we always do for some uppy closey time. All right, yeehaw, we're going to spend a little bit of up close and personal time here with the 454 Big Block version 2. So, you know what? I never had a version 1 of this. All I've had is the is the 454 version 2. So I don't know what the differences are. And we're going to try to find those differences when we get back out to normal view. But yeah, that's what it looks like. It comes with its own top. This is all its own uh, its own piece. Let me try to get this apart. So you can see all the airflow adjustments. So you can knock this down to... It gives you the options of doing single, dual, triple, and quadruple coils on here with all these different airflow adjustments. And those will coincide with holes that are cut into the ring itself. Now the deck, the deck isn't amazing. The deck's actually a little bit claustrophobic. And it took me uh, basically forever to get this build in here. So I am not 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 going to be pulling it out but that's the build i have on there came out to around uh, 0.14 ohms because i used 26 what is that 24 gauge canthal i've been using this build for so long i don't even remember what it is i believe that's 24 gauge canthal so as you can see there's a uh, a little spot right here where you can see some wire sticking through right some wire sticking through there, some wire sticking through there, some wire sticking through there. Screws, these are the negative, that's the positive. So what you wanna do with this atomizer, what would be ideal is to build quad vertical coils. That would be the best way to go with this atomizer. That's the way that I've found that works the best. So you use this obviously as your positive and then your negatives go under this ring. There's a ring right here that goes all the way around. So what I did is I just laid my negative contacts down. This ring goes over it. You screw it down using the four screws and then you just clip your leads off or you wiggle them off. There's always the traditional method of grabbing it and wiggling it off. Your leads are gonna be captured in between the base and this ring, this ring that goes around the top. God, I wish I could take this build off of here, but I don't, I really don't want to. I really, really, really don't want to, but it kind of gives you an idea of how to do it. Now, when I did this, I just clipped my leads and you have to make sure to clip your leads very, very close, very, very close because when you put the top cap on, you don't want your leads coming in contact with the housing, with the housing of the uh, of the top cap of the atomizer. You don't, whoops, you don't want that happening. Okay, you don't want your leads touching this part right here. So when you put it on, you have to make sure there's no resistance, there's no leads scraping on anything. Really, what you want to do is just make sure that they're cut very, very, very close. You can see that lead right there, how it's. Oh, just flush with the body, the next one over. Yes, maybe it's sticking out just a touch, but it's very, very, very flush with the body. Like I said, this came out uh, this came out very, very low and because it's a quad coil. Whoops, and I don't have a mech mod to put this on right now to show you a glowy, glowy shot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, I am going to wick it, I am going to juice it, and then we are going to vape it. So what I do is I use that sort of little double pom-pom technique that I showed in my in my easy, simple, and effective coil build. And I'm going to put this in here. Whoops. If it doesn't stick to my uh, finger, I'm going to put this in here like that, right? I'm going to grab my little tweezers, right? I'm going to go in there. I'm going to grab that cotton. 
See how I can grab that cotton right there? And all I'm gonna do is just pull this down about halfway, just like that. Let me pull it up just a little bit, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fancy, fancy, tiny little scissors. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off, just like that. And then I'm gonna take the rest of this, I'm just gonna stuff it back down in there. Perfect, oh my gosh, that is one coil that has been successfully wicked. And all you have to do is that friggin' three more times. It has been wicked. It has been juiced and vapors. Normal view, normal view. So yeah, that's the big block. 454 version 2 up close and personal. I'm just going to read this off of the website. Same great features as the original 454 with a shorter top cap and a non-removable drip tip. I don't know, did the version 1 have a longer top cap and a non-removable drip tip? Because this non-removable drip tip on here is really short. And when you're running a quad coil in here that's in the, you know, the 0.12 range, it gets hot as balls against your lips. I have to use one of these dinky little dot mod Petri, you know, atomizers to go on there. And it makes it a little bit longer, but that way it keeps the heat away from my mouth. Uh, removable top cap for easy access to your wicks. Air fin cooled top cap to reduce heat. It get, just gets hot. It gets hot as balls. I don't know if that's making a huge difference in there. Adjustable airflow control, which does work very, very well. Uh, lining up different hole configurations. It can produce one, two, or four adjustable sized vent holes depending on your build. Uh, entire outside of Addy is the negative post. Wires are secured by removable stainless steel ring. Very deep juice well with alignment lip for centering coils with a drill bit. Uh, ULTEM insulator, which is FDA food safe and one of the strongest, most high temperature plastics available. It is stable up to 400 degrees and four times stronger than Delrin. Conical top cap to enhance flavor. Single center post design. Center post has a cross drilled 0.06 holes for large wire builds, solid copper center inner post for superior conductivity. All that aside, it has a bit of a learning curve building on it. I, uh, I generally don't enjoy vertical coil builds. I just don't. There's something about them I just don't get along with. This one has been really, really nice. But there's just something about vertical coils that I don't really I don't really get along with them and I'm not super skilled at building them. It took me a little while to get the build down on this. But I eventually got a nice little 24 gauge anarchist, you know, quad coil in there and it's exactly like it describes and I apologize for not taking this build apart, but it took me so long to do. Didn't want to take it apart, but basically there is the deck and you have four screws. Your bottom leads get captured by a ring that goes around those screws. It kind of sits on there like the lid of a Tupperware container and it captures your wires. And then when you screw down the negative screws, it tightens that ring on there and holds your wires in place. Then you either have to wiggle them off or clip them very, very, very close. You don't want those leads sort of touching the outside of the body as far as I understand. I have had no issues with it. I clipped my leads very, very close, and I know that when I take on and off my top cap, I don't get any sort of scraping or grinding sound. Um, I trim my wicks down pretty far, and it helps to trim your wicks down pretty far and then sort of mash them up into a point. You see how my wicks are sort of mashed into a point? If your wicks are there, and they're big and fluffy, then they're gonna get in the way of that airflow. You need to you need to leave room in there for your airflow. And all you do, this is set on quad coil, so all I have to do is line up one of these holes with my coil. Coil, coil, yeah, they're all lined up. The thing hits unbelievable. It just gets really, really warm. I mean, but the, but the performance on it is ridiculous. I mean, this is like vape capital cloud comp status, bro. SoCal, what? I'm just, I don't know why I said that. That was really, really dumb. <coughs> what was that all about?
Anyway, it's, it's, it has a learning curve on it. You have to build vertical coils, you have to wick it vertically, you have to get your wicks in the right place. What's great about mashing all your wicks towards the center like that is when you drip down on it, if I grab my little juice and I drip down on it, it's gonna hit right on those cotton wicks that are all pointing up and it's gonna kinda go ooze down onto your coils exactly where it needs to be. You're gonna need your vape budget hands on this because the 454 version two eighty dollars that's eight zero dollars with that said i feel like this is one of the most unique atomizers that i've ever come across the way that you capture the negative leads with that ring is actually really really easy to do it's got a mountain of airflow i wish this was delrin on top or whatever super fancy ultem insulator material on top because it gets hot it gets really, really warm. I've taken, what, three, maybe four drags on it over the course of this whole video, and if I touch it, it is warm to the touch. I mean, like, it is borderline uncomfortably warm to the touch. So, put that little dot mod drip tip in there, works like a charm. With the wicks being so high in there as well, and there's no way around this. Your wicks are just going to be a little bit higher. If you drag really, really hard, you get a very slight amount of spit back. I don't know. It's a great atomizer. I've really been enjoying the performance of it. I'm not a huge fan of building it and wicking it, but I do like this performance that I'm getting. I'm not a big fan of the spit back. I personally don't know if I would spend 80 bucks on this atomizer. In fact, I can say pretty confidently that for me, I don't think I would spend 80 bucks on this atomizer. I'm glad I got to use it. I'm glad I got to experience it. I'm glad I got to build it. I'm glad I got to use it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I just personally wouldn't spend $80 on the 454 version two because vertical coils don't appeal to me. And I, I don't like, I don't I avoid the word hate. I don't like how warm this gets. It just gets too freaking warm. If you were trying to, whoops, if you were trying to use this without a drip tip on there, your lips would be burnt and it's uncomfortable. I don't even want to put my lips on there. It's hot. It's just so hot. And even if you use like a higher gauge canthal, like if you, if you use 26 or 28 or 29 gauge canthal in there, I have a feeling it would still be pretty freaking warm if you're running it on a regulated mod. Of course, you could crank your wattage down, but that's not really what this atomizer is designed for. This is a cloud chasing atomizer. The flavor is good, but I think I just think the flavor is good because I keep getting juice in my mouth and I have a very full flavored vape because of the juice in my mouth. I'm gonna wrap this up. It is what it is, and it is the 454 version two. I'll have a link in the description to where you can check these out if you're so interested. That's what I got for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, we will all keep on vaping. That's enough.